Since the very beginning, Pokemon have had counterparts. Whether it be because they were rivals, allies, game exclusive, or even that just fans associate them with each other. So for my Fakemon region, Devar, I decided to make a bunch of different counterpart Pokemon. A group of natural counterparts, the fossil Pokemon, are a great place to start. Considering that we haven't had a traditional pair of two-stage fossil Pokemon for three generations now, and that so many people, myself included, want to see them again, I felt that we should give them a major comeback. So let me introduce you to the Tusk and Tail Fossils, which when revived become Boomith and Magmoa. Let's hone in on Boomith, the rumbling Pokemon. This little guy is rock electric type, and I worked with Trainer Rex to create them. It is based on an extremely famous extinct elephantid, the Woolly Mammoth, from which it gets half of its name, with the other half coming from Boom, as in Booming Thunder. And this charge calf certainly is woolly, with its gray fur actually being cloud-like wool, referencing how it tends to carry lots of static electricity, but also looks like rain clouds. Boomith are small but mighty, with their resounding footsteps being known to shake the earth beneath them, causing rock slides and cave-ins. They become especially irritable if there are any Magmoa nearby, and will try to shock them. Boomith at level 38 evolves into Stormith, the crashing Pokemon. The gray cloudy wool of Boomith has darkened to a deep black, becoming reminiscent of a severe thunderstorm. This displays the sheer electrical power of this Pokemon, a true master of thunder, which it summons forth with its signature move, Thunderous Stomp, a base 75 electric type physical attacking move that has a 10% chance to either flinch or paralyze. This sovereign of thunder is inspired by the king of gods and heaven in Hinduism, Indra. He is also a god of the sky, lightning, thunder, rain, rivers, and war. He rides atop his mystical mount, Aravata, a white, multi-headed, and multi-tusked elephant and king in his own right, which Stormith's four-pronged tusks are made to reference, while looking like branches of a lightning bolt. Aravata is also called the Elephant of the Clouds and is known to produce them, which is where both Boomith and Stormith get their cloud-like wool. The curly pattern in the clouds and the shape of Stormith's ear is meant to reference Indra's lightning-summoning weapon of choice, the Vajra, which further plays into this Pokémon's voltaic might. Now let's move to this line's counterpart, Magmoa, the dry Pokemon. I worked with Tubbs AZ to create our hissing homie here, which is a rock fire type. Magmoa is based on the enormous prehistoric serpent, the Titanoboa. Its horns naturally reference the Saharan or desert horned viper, but also in combination with its fire typing, refers to how snakes are associated with demons and devils. Magmoa's body is so hot that it dries out anything nearby, and will actively try to dry out the wool of Boomith that are nearby. In their time, they tended to live in the harsh deserts of Devar, and are said to be responsible for creating them alongside its evolution, Vrython, the drought Pokemon. As its category suggests, this Pokemon can create severe droughts, with drought being its main ability. It also comes with a new move called Dehydrate, which removes the water type from its target, greatly reducing the effectiveness of water type moves, which it's quite weak to. Its name comes from its main inspiration, Vritra, who is a Devana, a race of Asuras, and is the personification of drought, and as such is the natural born enemy of Indra. He is depicted as an enormous serpent that blocks rivers and holds the waters of the world captive before being defeated by Indra. This relationship is displayed with Vrythe and Stormith, furthering them as counterparts. As unlike previous fossil Pokémon, you would be able to find both of their fossils in the same game, buried in the sand around the massive Valana Desert. For a bit of a fun look behind the scenes, after the design of Vrython was finished, I was doing a bit of research for another video, and came upon a creature from Brazilian folklore called the Boitata, a fire elemental horned serpent that is sometimes depicted with multiple fiery eyes. So yeah, I accidentally designed a Boitata Pokémon before knowing it existed. Keeping with this whole fire and desert theme we have going on, we move on to two bug-type counterparts, this time through game exclusivity, but also in a few other ways. First up, we have a little ground-type bug that goes by the name of Hellmite, the worker Pokémon, which I worked with JJ Mons to bring to life. If you have been following this series from the beginning, you will recognize this guy from the very first moments of the first video. Hellmite is based on termites, which some species are known to build enormous mounds made of saliva and soil. So Hellmite is a little worker with a built-in hard hat who, with the help of its fellow Hellmite, builds massive colonies compared to their size, and even by Pokémon standards. Their natural predators would be Balome and Terra Bear, who we introduced in the previous Devar video, as they dig up their mounds and try to eat them, just like real-life sloth bears and termites. To help fight back and fortify their defense, they evolve into Digrill, the Driller Pokémon. This Pokémon will dig several escape routes underneath the colony for an easy escape, and will dig traps around it to help stall their predators so they can run. If all else fails, they will take them head on, using their powerful hind legs and drill-like hands to attack. Digrill is also highly adapted to dig deep underground where temperatures rise, having abilities like heatproof or thermal exchange. Digrill's name is based on Dig and the family of the Mole Cricket, Grillotalpidae. 
for which it also gets its design inspiration. Their other design inspiration obviously comes from miners, specifically gold miners. This mixture of concepts is based on a creature described to live in India 2500 years ago by Greek philosopher Herodotus called the Gold Digging Ants, also known as Myrmex Indicos or Indian Ants. They were described as fox-sized ant-like creatures which guarded rich gold deposits in ancient India. While Digril and Helmite are more ant-adjacent, Digril's behavior of guarding the mound takes from this creature, with the metaphorical gold being the lives of its mound mates. Because the real treasure is the friends we made along the way. Helmite and Digril would be exclusive to Pokémon Jasper, while in Pokémon Jade you would find its counterpart, Amberm, the worm Pokémon, a fire bug type, who I also worked with JJ Mons to create. This adorable arthropod is based on the caterpillar stage of the common windmill butterfly, which is commonly found in Sikkim and whose coloration, might I say, is well suited to a fire type. The little spinules of this creature are reflected on Emberm to look like tiny little volcanoes all over its body. As you have no doubt noticed, this Pokemon bears a striking resemblance to the head empty, no thoughts, ice bug from Galar, Snob. That was intentional, as this stage is a semi rival to Snob. A rival in cuteness! Some fans have thought of the Volcarona line as counterparts to the Frostmoth line, as they are both moths that you can get later in the game and opposite types. Regardless of that, I wanted to make a more direct Butterfly counterpart. With that said, Emberm evolves into Emberfly, the smoke Pokemon. The common windmill caterpillar becomes this absolutely gorgeous butterfly that was begging to be made into a fire type. It is a species of swallowtail, and to me, those branches at the bottom of the wings looked just like billowing plumes of smoke with embers floating through them. So that is exactly what inspired this design. This species of butterfly, like many, exhibits the behavior of puddling, in which they try to extract nutrients from mud through the fluid. So that would be Emberfly's ability, Puddling, which raises their special attack by one stage when hit by a Ground-type move, but they still take damage. These two are counterparts with each other due to their games, their abilities, and are even counterparts with other Pokémon. And one kind of counterpart that has turned into multiple counterparts now are the Pikachu clones. So as expected, Devor has to have its own Pika clone who is… Doki Boko, the Restless Pokémon, an Electric Ground-type. This worrisome cutie is based on the Indian hairy-footed gerbil, which inhabits the sandy and rocky areas of western India and Pakistan. Like most Pika clones, Doki Boko's name is made from Japanese words or onomatopoeia, coming from Doki Doki, the sound of a heart beating faster, which anyone who has played Doki Doki Literature Club will completely understand, but also comes from Deko Boko, meaning a hole in the ground or uneven earth. This plays into Doki Boko's personality. It is in a near constant state of anxiousness, which only elevates as this Pokemon stores more and more electricity. It can only be calmed if it releases this nervous energy into the ground using its plug like tail or by feeding it to its evolution, Boko Sama, the restful Pokemon. Unlike Doki Boko, Boko Sama absorbs electricity as a means of food, filling it to the point where it gets very tired and goes into a food coma. Also unlike Doki Boko, this Pokemon is based on the Indian Desert Jerd, a relative of gerbils found in the Tar Desert. Bokosama's name partly comes from Osama, which is how kings are referred to in Japanese, as this Pokemon is like the king of the Doki Boko, bringing order to the chaos of their anxiousness and ultimately being a calming and grounding presence to them. You can see it even has a crown-shaped tuft of fur, actually giving a purpose to the addition of hair upon evolution. Looking at you, Pomot! Super Saiyan looking little Doki Boko and Boko Sama's oddly shaped tails refer to type C, D, and M plug types that are used across India. Alright, let's leave the desert and move into some other types, shall we? This next Pokemon is actually a counterpart to a regional form I made for my first region, Cornera. I had made the Ice Poison type Cornera and Viper, but many wondered, what about Zangoose? So for that, I give you Davarian Zangoose, a pure ghost type. This awesome apparition is based on the Indian folktale called the Mongoose and the Brahmin's Wife. A shortened version of this story is that a pet mongoose is left in charge of protecting the child of a Brahmin and his wife while they went out. The wife was wary of the mongoose and thought it may hurt the child. After they left, a cobra snuck into the child's room. The mongoose valiantly defended the child and killed the cobra. The mongoose then heard the wife's footsteps and ran out to show the good job it had done, but all the wife saw was its bloody mouth, assumed it was the child's blood, and threw a heavy box at the mongoose, killing it. Afterward, the wife saw the dead cobra, realized her mistake, and was struck with deep regret. The box being what ended the mongoose further plays into another aspect of Davarian Zangoose's inspiration, being that of Schrodinger's cat. The thought experiment of a paradox in which a cat left inside an unobserved closed box may hypothetically be alive and dead at the same time. Just like a ghost who is neither alive nor fully dead, as well as this mongoose and cat-based Pokémon, with the mongoose coming from the same suborder as cats, Feliformia. 
Moving on, let's take on two bird counterparts with one stone. First, we have a bird Pokemon you can find up north in the Frostcap Barpiswar Mountain Range, Prismonal, the Aurora Pokemon, an Ice Flying type, who I worked with Trainer Mats to bring to life. This polychromatic pheasant is based on the Himalayan Monal, the national bird of Nepal. It is also designed after depictions of the Hamsa bird, which is an aquatic migratory bird typically thought of as a kind of swan, goose, or even a flamingo. But with the Mona living in an icy habitat which is water adjacent, I thought it would be a nice twist. The Himalayan Monal's coloration and habitat were so unique it made for a great ice type. Prismonal glimmers brightly as it flies across the Barpiswar Mountains. It has often caused inaccurate reports of Articuno visiting Devar. Those reports are usually by those visiting from Kanto. For its counterpart, we head south, to just above the city of Carbonapur, where you can find Jaconium, the anodized Pokemon, a steel flying type, who I also worked with trainer mats on. Its name comes from Titanium, which is nicknamed the Rainbow Metal, and is one that can be anodized as its category suggests, an electrochemical process that converts the metal's surface into a decorative, durable, corrosion-resistant finish. This is how you get that colored metal like that crazy rainbow jewelry you see at Spencer's. The other half of its name comes from the Jacana, specifically the Bronze Wing Jacana, which, like the Monal, has this gorgeous rainbow coloration to it, though it is a bit more subtle. These are also probably the birds you've seen online with four pairs of legs, as they store their young up in their plumage. Jacanium's design also draws inspiration from a creature found in Hinduism and Buddhism called a Kanara, which are beautiful human-bird hybrids. Jacanium's coloration is taken from the gilded statues depicting the Kanara, further playing into its partial steel typing. These two are counterparts in their locations and in that they represent different types of rainbow or prismatic phenomena, water slash ice and metal. Speaking of metal, our next Pokemon is a counterpart to a metallic fan favorite line that just got a new evolution, Ponyard, Bisharp, and King Gambit. India invented what is believed to be the precursor to chess, Chaturanga. So either I was going to make a regional form, or what I actually did, which was make a brand new line that mirrors them and fills the rest of the missing chess pieces. So let me introduce you to Rookler and Nightarge, the round shield Pokemon and the blunt shield Pokemon, which are both steel fairy type. The natural opposite of swords is shields, right? I mean, that's what Pokemon said, so if you disagree, you're just wrong. Rookler's name comes from Rook and Buckler, a smaller medieval rounded shield. Nightarge's name comes from Knight and Targe, a bit of a larger rounded shield. Upon defeating three Nightarges that are holding a ruler's crest and leveling up, Nightarge evolves into Queen Dosh, the multi-shield Pokemon. This Pokemon is the ultimate queen of defense, with one of the best defensive typings in the game and a bulky build to match. This refers to its inspiration, the chess move known as the Queen's Indian Defense. This ain't a ruler that rests on its laurels. Queen Dosh is a tactful commander in its own right and is frequently at odds with King Gambit and its pre-evolutions. Queen Dosh's name comes from Queen and Rondosh, a larger rounded shield. Yes, I could have gone with the route of calling it Queen Gambit and referenced that chess move, but I feel this name and move better represent the overall concept and region, plus it makes it its own Pokemon separate from King Gambit while still being a counterpart. But for some counterparts that are more directly tied together, we have a pair of split evolutions for a Pokemon based on a world-famous Nepali creature, the Yeti. So I present you with Yetot, the Yeti Pokemon, a pure ice type. This cuddly cryptid is just as friendly and affectionate as they look. People in the village of Himindapu often have this Pokemon as their starter, because its demeanor is so welcoming and easygoing, making it a great first companion. And with it having two different evolutions, it makes it versatile for later gyms as well. For the first evolution, at level 35 during the daytime, Yetot evolves into Shamanable, the light Yeti Pokemon, an ice fairy type. This Pokemon is a healer. It is revered in villages across the Barpiswar Mountains, and are believed to be the originators of holistic medicine across Devar. Shamanable's signature ability is Mystical Cure, which heals any status condition of one member in the party upon being switched out of battle. Kind of the opposite of the Natural Cure ability, which it also would be capable of having. And for Yatat's second evolution, at level 35 during the nighttime, it evolves into... A Bomb Age, the Dark Yeti Pokemon, an Ice Dark type. Quite the opposite of Shamanable, this Pokemon uses odd and destructive moves. Though a bit sinister, it is still respected for its magical prowess. A Bomb Age's signature ability is Strange Magic, which automatically forces super effective moves used against it to go last. I know Ice Dark isn't a hugely viable type due to its many weaknesses, but it is still a really cool type combo, pun intended. With Sneasel and Weavile being the only two with it until Qian Pao, who proved it could be used competitively? Anyway, these two evolutions have a common theme that I'm sure Final Fantasy fans have already taken note of. Their designs are inspired by the classic looks of the White Mage and Black Mage. I'm always happy to sneak in references to other RPGs with my fake mon, as Game Freak does this themselves, and I'm a huge nerd about them. Though this connection was not out of nowhere. These two evolutions are also inspired by a creature from Nawari folklore called a Kya. 
They are mythical, hairy, ape-like creatures that appear in children's stories, and come in different colors. The White Kya are said to be bringers of goodness and good luck to the home, while the Black Kya create problems and encountering one can make you ill, thus the connection to these RPG classes with the same color choices. I tried to be unique as the Yeti is a super popular cryptid and thus many Fakemon have been made using them as an inspiration, so I am very proud of how this line came out. And those were some counterpart Pokemon of the Devar region. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.